I'm Brian Cooley from CNET on Cars, taking some of your emails about high-tech cars and modern driving. And this one comes in from Ellie E, who says, if turbos are so great, and we talk about them a lot around here, why are they not standard on just about every new car by now? And what would it take to install one? Also, he says, could you please explain flex fuel? Okay, Ellie, so turbos are an amazing technology. You get more power, more efficiently out of typically a smaller engine is how they're often being used today. The thing with turbos, though, is adding them is not trivial. Even for a car maker with all their resources, adding a turbocharger to an existing engine design is going to add some cost because the turbo itself is a very complex, highly machined mechanism and it's got a lot of plumbing that goes around it. It also adds a certain amount of complexity to the design and to what you're trying to shoehorn into the engine bay. It's a lot of additional gear that is external to the engine itself. And know that an automaker cannot just stick a turbo on a current engine and say, good, it's running. There's a lot of R&D and testing and engineering and recertification to be done before that goes into a production line of cars. And everything is done at big scale in the auto biz, so they don't onesie twosie things or big projects. So that's one of the things around turbochargers. Now there are add-on kits out there, a lot of them for late model cars. You didn't mention what you drive, but let's assume it's something made in the last few years. You may very well find an add-on turbo kit for it. They typically cost in the few thousand dollars range. And also make sure you've got some good guarantees in there because these are elaborate pieces of gear that spin at very high RPMs and make sure the kit you buy does promise to be regulatory compliant in the state where you're going to be installing it and driving your car. Now, in terms of flex fuel, that means a world of three things that gasoline engine cars can run on. Of course, there's gasoline, that's the main fuel. There's E15, which is 15% ethanol, which is corn alcohol, basically. And the main flex fuel people think about at the pump is E85. This is 85% ethanol, typically corn alcohol, and 15% gasoline. That's a very different mix for a car to run on. So when you buy a flex fuel car, it does several things to allow it to digest that diet, including a change in the ignition timing because there is a far higher octane to E85 than to gasoline. Secondly, you change the fuel flow mapping because you get more fuel into the engine to get the same amount of power when you're running on E85. And thirdly, you have to make sure the materials in the engine are suitable to be exposed to ethanol, alcohol, which is a very different chemical, of course, than gasoline. Those are the main three things that constitute a flex fuel car.